everybody, thanks for joining me today, Dr. Ross Marcogiani, with another great talk at Trumpa Health and Wellness Center. Today we're going to be talking about detoxification. We're going to be going over what detoxification is, how we detoxify, what can interfere with detoxification, how we test detox pathways, and how we improve our detoxification. Let's dive in. So with detoxification, or more commonly known as through the medical term of hepatic biotransformation, uh, detoxification is more than just the liver processing uh, junk, so to speak. Really, there's a lot more going on. And that's, this is the key point to take if we're just looking at things that improve liver function. Uh, to improve detoxification, we're missing the mark. There are multiple aspects here that need to be involved. So, which involve the liver, obviously that being the main issue, which we're gonna dive in and talk about uh, in detail today, but also looking at kidney function, making sure the kidneys are filtering and excreting correctly, making sure our lungs are working appropriately, making sure we're, we're sweating, our skin is uh, intact and that we're not having um, excessive dermatological issues, making sure our digestive tract is working effectively and we don't have severe uh, dysbiosis, and making sure our hormones are appropriate and that we're not uh, that we're not having any circulating xenoestrogens that may influence our detoxification. So how do we detoxify? detoxify. Mainly those ways that we just talked about as far as kidneys, liver, lungs, skin, GI tract, hormones, they all influence how we sweat, how we breathe or how we uh, respire, how we pass bowel movements, and then how we urinate. Those are all really important ways of how we detoxify. Sweat, air, stool, and urine. What The analogy that I like with detoxification is the analogy of collecting trash and bringing trash to the curb. So think of it as like the first phase, which we'll dive into detail, is collecting the trash at home. As we can see here, the trash starts to build up at home. This is more of a phase one detox. Uh, obviously there can be issues that happen here. We don't take out the trash. We don't, uh, we just let the trash kind of overfill. Uh, that would be kind of phase one. And then taking the trash out to the curb, that would be more of phase two. Obviously, as you can see in this picture, there can be issues here with phase two and uh, the trash at the curb building up as well. So really important, making sure we look at, uh, if we're having detoxification issues, that we're looking at more than just the liver. That's a really key take home here. So how does detoxification work? So we talked about it briefly just a minute ago. There really are, uh, there are four phases, but two phases that really get, um, they get a lot of attention. And those would be phase one and phase two detoxification. Phase one, which is more commonly known as your cytochrome P54 pathway, or um, your P450 pathway is typically what it's called. Uh, this is the process of bringing a lipid, uh, a lipid xenobiotic or a lipid solu uh, a lipid toxin into the liver and trying to uh, release enzymes to help break down that toxin uh, or that xenobiotic into a more water soluble toxin so it can be excreted. Uh, typically what happens here, we have uh, we have reduction, hydrolysis, oxidation. These are chemical processes that go on during phase one. So again, really important. This phase one is taking a lipid, solu uh, a lipid, excuse me, a lipid toxin or xenobiotic, and starting to release enzymes to make it more lipid or more water soluble, more water soluble, so it can be excreted. So it turns into after we're done with state uh, phase one, it turns into kind of like a semi a semi-solid xenobiotic here. Uh, really important for phase one, which we'll talk about, but uh, a lot of uh, B vitamins are gonna be very helpful for pushing phase one. A lot of uh, um, vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin, uh, vitamin E, some antioxidants, free radicals. So as you can see in this diagram here, we have the intermediate phase before we get to phase two. This is very crucial. So this would be the aspect of 
the trash just starting to pile up in your home. And as we do that, we notice, you know, in, the, in that analogy, the, your house would get really stinky, a lot of flies would show up, a lot of bugs. It would just create a lot of adverse reactions if we didn't take the trash out. Same here in this phase. This is really important that we're pushing to phase two because we can get a lot of free radicals. We can get a lot of, um, a lot of oxidation and inflammation. So that would be another aspect which we didn't really hint upon, but making sure we address free radicals and inflammation. So using a lot of your CoQ10, using your turmeric, using your various um, antioxidant vitamins such as vitamin A, vitamin E, vitamin C, really important using all of these really powerful antioxidants to quench free radicals and then supporting phase one and phase two nutrients to push into phase two. And then phase two is going to be conjugation. Now this is where we take that semi-solid xenobiotic that we made in phase one, and now we make it a lipid, a water soluble in conjugation in phase two. So now we take this fat soluble, which was a fat soluble molecule, into a, a water soluble molecule. And a lot of times this is the process of, uh, of glucuronidation, sulfation, methylation, acetylation. These are the processes that take place during the phase two. So making sure we support with glutathione, really, really important. Making sure supporting sulfur amino acids, your taurine, your glycine. Um, your cysteine, these are all really important uh, to be consuming to push phase two. And then so phase, essentially, we have phase one, intermediate is considered, I kind of consider it phase two. Uh, your phase two, I call it phase three, I don't want to get that confused. And then phase four is actually the excretion through the urine, through the stool, through our breath, and through our sweat. So what can interfere with detoxification? So nutrition is a really big issue here. Consuming lots of trans fats, cooking with, um, with polyunsaturated fats. What will happen here is when we start uh, producing, uh, cooking with less stable, heat stable fats, such as our polyunsaturated fats, such as our olive oil. Um, good to cook olive oil with low temperatures, but when we get higher temperatures, we start to release lipid peroxides, which is uh, more likely to become uh, inflammation and produce, uh, produce oxidants. Making sure we're uh, avoiding coloring aspects, flavoring agents, other preservatives, emulsifiers, stabilizers, thickeners, pesticides, herbicides, fungus, fungicides. These can all interfere with detoxification. Uh, making sure we're assessing mold and environmental pollutants or POPs, persist, persistent organic pollutants. Those are really important uh, if we have exposure to benzenes, PCBs, uh, phthalates. These are all chemicals that are, can be found around the house, whether they're in nonstick pans, whether in fire, deter, uh, fire retardant clothing, whether it's um, other forms of chem chemicals in, cl in the cleaners. These can all influence our detoxification. Uh, heavy metals are really important, so assessing lead, cadmium, mercury, copper, uh, those arsenic, those are the, the big ones. Um, again, we talked about xenoestrogen, so some of these chemicals that we talked about earlier can influence and actually create um, xenoestrogens, just consider them to be like fake estrogens. Um, and then also various drugs and antibiotics can influence and interfere with how we detoxify. So how do we test these detoxification pathways? So first, running a complete metabolic panel, or CMP for short, you'll typically get uh, your AST, your ALT, which are liver enzymes, you'll look at uric acid, you'll look at bilirubin and uh, glomerular filtration rate, which looks at your kidneys. These are some markers that look at kidneys as well. Um, but these will be able to assess, again, kidney and liver function. Uh, looking at oxidized LDL can indicate if we have high inflammation if we're having lots of exposure to POPs, those persistent, uh, those persistent organic pollutants. Looking at what's called 8-hydroxydeguanosine. Uh, this is another marker for inflammation, another marker for, again, those POPs. 
Looking at thyroid markers, thyroid markers can indicate whether we're detoxifying correctly. Looking at GGT, that's another marker for your liver function. Also a really helpful test here is an organic acid test, which allows us to look at those detoxification pathways, allows us to look at if we're uh, pushing phase one, phase two, where we're getting stuck. It allows us to get some assessment into that actual uh, detoxification phase in the liver. And then also uh, testing for molds and metals. Typically the best way to assess this, there's a lot of controversy, but research is showing that urine analysis is the best way to look at that. So how do we improve detoxification? There's a lot of ways here, but let's stick to the basics. Making sure we're hydrating well, getting half our body weight in fluid ounces. If I weigh 200 pounds, I wanna consume about 100 fluid ounces a day of water. The solution to pollution is dilution. Um, making sure we're eating well, good nutrients, having high sulfur amino acids, uh, cruciferous vegetables, broccoli, onions, asparagus, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts. These are all going to be very helpful uh, in, in improving detoxification. You can read the other, the other foods here that are on the screen in regards to good foods. Um, supporting with like infrared sauna. Uh, near infrared sauna is the most appropriate, but at the end of the day, if we're just getting a good sweat, we are pushing our detoxification pathways. I typically recommend if you're gonna do a sauna, about 20 minutes specifically, uh, if an infrared, uh, you know, 15 to 20 minutes will be, will be perfect for pushing those detox pathways and making sure you shower off directly so they don't reabsorb those, uh, those toxins that you've excreted. Uh, doing coffee enemas, typically one a week is pretty is is, is enough to stimulate the liver. Uh, so the whole purpose around the coffee enema is that it actually will uh, stimulate the liver to produce and uh, and push phase one, phase two detoxification. And then some vitamins. Looking at again what we talked about earlier for phase one, your B vitamins, phase two, glutathione, phase. Phase two would be helpful with uh, NAC, N-acetylcysteine. Uh, we can do milk thistle, which help liver function. We can use glucoraphanin, which is considered like broccoli seed extract, um, a component of sulforaphane. Basically, it helps just know that it helps improve detoxification. There's a lot of various other supplements that we can do, uh, supporting free radical or supporting inflammation, you know, turmeric, CoQ10, vitamin D, vitamin E, vitamin C, uh, vitamin A, all uh, good antioxidants. So there's a lot of things that we can do there to focus and improve detoxification. But let's focus on the basics first. Hydrate well, eat well, sweat, and move. Those are gonna be really important. The rest will be uh, in addition to. I appreciate your time today. Uh, if you know anyone that can benefit from this or if you're struggling with detoxification, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Uh, my goal is to be able to provide you with information to make informed decisions on your health, and I hope this helped today. Thank you and have a wonderful day.